All right, number 13, um, we're given some scenario about uh, the IRS service getting complaints about uh, tax auditors being rude. And so they decide they're going to train them or put them through sensitivity training uh, and then measure the number of complaints afterwards. Okay, so we've got uh, 10 different uh, individuals and we have the number of complaints they had before versus after. Uh, so this is uh, just a great example of a matched pairs set of data. So let me go to the nice fancy spreadsheet here. And let's see, paired. There we go, matched pairs. So a paired sample tests. And then notice um, we're given before versus after data. So I'm just going to go and take a second and just type in into the variable one, variable two all the different numbers, 8, 9, 6, 4, 10, and 3, and then off to the side here, uh, 3, 8, 3, 2, 5, 7, 7, 5, 9, and 4. Okay, now notice when I updated those numbers in the spreadsheet, uh, the differences automatically got calculated. So they automatically did um, before minus after. Uh, to get that so one of your one thing I'm looking for is that you can give me that set of numbers uh, let's see so two negative one negative one and so you just copy them over one three two uh, negative one negative one okay uh, now, our null hypothesis for matched pairs uh, is the mu of D, the mu of differences, uh, and typically we're measuring that against zero. So that's what we're going to do here. Let me pull up that symbol. Okay, so this next part, um, sorry, let me, let me copy that over. So our mu of D is our null. That, in other words, if the sensitivity tra sensitivity training did nothing then I would expect just as many people to get better as gotten worse, so I'd, I would expect the, the mean of these differences to actually be zero. Uh, the alternative hypothesis comes from carefully reading the context of, of what they're, they're measuring here. So they want us to test the claim that the average number of complaints after sensitivity training is less than the complaints before. So they, they would want us to see if after is bigger than before. Okay. Well, the way I constructed this, my differences was I did before minus after. So if after is supposed to be smaller than before, and I did before minus after, then I would expect, um, given before being the bigger, okay, so the bigger minus the smaller, I'd expect to see positive numbers. So I'd expect this difference to be greater than zero. Okay, so come back up here. Uh, coming over here again, they didn't give me an alpha, so we're going to go with an alpha of 0.05, which correlates to a confidence level of 0.9. That's the way this fancy spreadsheet works it. Uh, and I'm testing that it's actually greater than zero, so greater than right there. And I want uh, these numbers down here at the bottom, so a t score of 0.9. 0.802 uh, degrees of freedom would be 9 and a p-value of 0.221 okay so since our p-value I'm sure I got plenty of space there since our p-value is bigger than our 5% this is not anything to get excited about uh, the training did not work uh, and so there is not enough evidence to suggest uh, let's see, suggest that the number of complaints after the training is less than the number of complaints before. Suggest that the number of complaints after the training is smaller than before the training. Uh, 
Let's see if I can scoot that up a little bit. No, come on. Well, that did absolutely nothing. Okay, it's coming down here. That's fine. Uh, number 14, a random sample of 400 families in the city of Minneapolis show that 192 of them own pets. The city council claims that 53% of the family in the city owns pets. Does this data indicate that the percent is actually less than 53? Okay, so we are now talking about a proportion. Uh, and so my proportion equals uh, the 0.53. And I'm testing against that the proportion is less than 0.53. So that would be my null and my alternative here. Okay. Uh, and since we've only got one sample to compare it with, and this is a one proportion test, and we're just going to type in our data here. So. Let's see, X and N. N refers to the full sample size. X is the number of successes. So 192 out of the 400. Confidence level. Okay, so again, we didn't say anything about uh, changing it from a common 5%. So that translates to a confidence level of 90. Uh, my null is actually 0.53. And I'm testing that it's less than. Okay. So I get a... Uh, let's see, I get a P hat right here of 0.48, in case you missed that right there. So that number right there, P hat, I wanted to know that, a Z score of negative uh, 2, uh, and a P value of 0 0.02. Okay, now. This is statistics. I conducted a hypothesis test, went out and gathered data, and I got a p-value of 0.02. I actually got something exciting and interesting, so I want to go tell someone about this. So this is where we would reject the null. There is enough evidence to support that the actual percentage is less than 53%. Percentage of families uh, that own a pet is less than 53%. All right, a market research firm supplies manufacturers with estimates of retail sales of their products for, uh, from samples of retail stores. Marketing managers are prone to look at estimates and ignore sampling error. So an SRS of 75 stores shows that the mean sales of 52 units of small appliances with the standard deviation 11. All right, so they looked at 75 stores uh, this month and saw that they sold 52. Uh, during the same month last year, they had 53 stores with 49. And... Uh, the manager happens to get all excited because he says, well, 49 is bigger than 52, so clearly things are getting better, okay? Uh, and then he compares us with this sort of, he thinks the, the increase is 6%, and he thinks that's, that's wonderful news, okay? So there's kind of two different ways we can go about looking at this. We, we could look at it like a proportion um, test, but the, the hint that I'm giving uh, is a T-score out of this. So uh, if I put a z-score down, then proportion test would make more sense. Um, but we're actually going to test that uh, it got better, that it improved uh, the first sample versus the second sample. So we have to then ask ourselves, are we looking at independent or dependent samples? Um, and one dead giveaway that it's independent is you've got a sample size of 75 in one and 53 in the other. So it can't be a matched pairs. It's got to be... Um, a difference of uh, two means. Okay, so it's a two sample t test, in which case um, we get sort of either one is bigger than the other, less than the other, etc. Okay, so uh, what I want to do is I want 
to do mu sub one is my null hypothesis is that the two the, the two cells are, are equal to each other. Uh, so I want to claim that mu sub one is equal to mu sub two. And then that's going to be my null. Uh, bear with me here. Okay. So my null is that the two means are equal. And I want to claim then that it got better. So that it's improved from last year to this year. So I expect the sales from last year to be smaller than the sales from this year. Or, or another way to put it is this year's sales are bigger. And I'm saying that mu1 would be last year, mu2 would be this year. Okay. So my alternative and what I'm testing against is that last year's cells are in fact smaller compared to this year's cells. Okay. Uh, and so then I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to type in our parameters. So again, you got to be careful with, with how we set this up. I set it up to be last year being um, mu1. So for us, that would be uh, 49 units sold, um, standard deviation of 11 out of 53. And then our mu2 would be the current. So when we had 52, standard deviation of 13 and 75 there. Okay, uh, we'll leave our alpha at 0.9. And I'm actually testing that it's less than. So I can just drop down menu that. And let's see what we get. Uh, we get a t-score of negative 1.49. Uh, degrees of freedom are 121.875. And a p-value of 0.08. Okay, so since our p-value is bigger than our 5%, that means we are going to fail to reject the null. And consequently, there is not enough evidence to suggest that uh, the mean sales have improved from last year. Okay, so in other words, um, this guy gets all excited because yes, on one hand, 6% is, is, is improving, but it's not statistically different enough that we would say that it actually is an improvement. It's right at sort of that border. Um, you know, there'd have to be a little bit more. In other words, they'd have to sell more this year. Part of the rise is that we went from having 53 stores to 75. So there's just more stores. So yeah, you're gonna see some growth there, but it's not significantly better like the manager is happy with, um, anyways.